What's up, guys? I'm here, joined James from Review and Preview, joined with a very good friend of mine, Nick Tox. He's back on the island. Welcome Nick, on, my peoples. Welcome. I think this is the first time you've been part of doing anything with Review and Preview, in a sense, along with being on the show. I do know that you have done the NFL video challenges for us uh, have, for yeah. two years now. So which has been hilarious. Great seeing that stuff from you. Thank you. Thank you, brother, for helping out with that stuff. I know <laughs> always, um, man, always. I know when we, me, Tom, and Kyle go through, we're like, all right, who do you think will be good for this and this? We're like, you know what? We got to get Nick on at least for one or two of them. He does some good stuff, you know. Um, so, but as you guys can tell, we have a soccer background behind us. You've seen Nick before just doing football, American football, we'll say, because Nick, you have background from England. Um, I know that from knowing you for God, probably 10 plus years now. Um, even knows at this point. <laughs> so, and over there and pretty much around the world, soccer is called football, if you guys didn't know that. So a quick history lesson in a sense. Um, but in America, in the United States, we call it soccer. Um, so I'm here with Nick to just kind of recap because Italy – beat England in the 2020 Euro final. Um, They win the Euros for the first time since 1968. Long drought for Italy, long time coming for them, especially against England, especially since, um, Nick, I'm sure you saw on social media that most of New York and New Jersey were celebrating like crazy for Italy once they won. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm Italian. So yeah. I'm pretty happy Italy won. Nick, give me your reaction on how you felt after this uh, loss to England because I know you're a big England fan. And, and you know what? Give me some background stuff because I know your dad's a big soccer guy too. Yeah. So I know you guys go back and forth with that stuff. So also give me some of his reactions on the game. Yeah, so building up to the game, I was I had work in the morning. And driving home from work when I got off at like 12, 12 30, I was driving back to my I was driving back to my apartment to get ready to get my English shut on and everything like that. And yeah. I was literally in my car shaking. Like I was <laughs> shaking. I was so nervous. Cause what people don't realize was that this was England's first major tournament final since the nineteen sixty six World Cup when they won it at wow. Wembley. So this so was their first this was their first major final in 55 years. Yeah. And it was their first time appearing in the final of the European Championships. Okay. So it was it was a big, big deal. Um, it was, and I was calling my dad on the way. I was like, oh, how are your nerves and whatnot? Like, how are you feeling? And my dad was calm. And I'm literally yeah. thinking to myself, how in God's name are you <laughs> calm? Because I'm shaking right now. I am literally shaking right now. Yeah. And my my fam like my family chats are going off like everyone's shaking and whatnot because one of my aunts on my dad's side is married to an italian so i have mm. uh, i have an italian uncle and a cousin and an aunt who live in perugia so they were my aunt and my cousin were all like split it's a win-win for them that italy wins win for them if england wins but yeah. my uncle obviously wanted italy to win because born and raised thoroughbred italian yeah. And so, yeah, he only had one team that he was going for. Um, I was what I was at the game watching at Cool Hands Irish pub in Atlantic Beach. And it was an Irish pub with a bunch of my buddies who I was who were supporting England. A couple of them were supporting Italy and some of them were there just to see me suffer. <laughs> so, OK, but I mean, but couldn't have gotten off to a best start. Um, it was two minutes into the game and England scored. I was like, that is the most perfect, perfect, perfect start. And yeah. I got up out of my I got up out of my seat and I was screaming. I was screaming. And then I looked and I see some random drunk like 50-year-old in an England shirt with a beer. And then he grabs me and then we're running laps around the bar, just going nuts and screaming with each other. And then it was it was an emotional roller coaster throughout the game because England had started so, 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 so well. It yeah. was such a good start to the game. Like they were all over Italy. Italy didn't touch the ball within the first 25 minutes 
hardly within the first 25 minutes, they didn't touch the ball. It was all England. But as the first half started to grow, Italy started coming back into the game. They started, mm-hmm. the Aces started getting, started getting on the ball more. Yeah. Um, they were starting to get more shots on England's goal and England started sitting back. Yeah. So half time really came at roughly around about the right time for England's sake. But as the game started progressing, Italy started getting more of a hold on the game and whatnot. Like they started getting more of a foothold in the game. And, and when Italy scored, it was a, it was the fact that England were essentially sitting back. They weren't really making very many changes. They um they brought Saka on once. I don't even remember when they brought Saka on. I think it was before Italy equalized. I don't remember when it was, but then they brought on Grealish. They brought on Jordan Henderson um, towards the end of the game, but they didn't really make many changes throughout the extra time period. And then they bring on Ra- and then they brought on Rashford and Sancho <laughs> for the penalties. Yeah. And my argu- my one quarrel with, with that was maybe bring them on a few minutes earlier, get them into the rhythm of the game. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Because mm-hmm. uh, down at Bocce, uh, you know I play Bocce, full, yep. full-blown Italians down there, whatnot. Yeah. But they were saying even, you know, they were saying, well, why did they bring in like Rashford just to do penalties? Like you're not warmed up compared to you have the other guys that played the 90 plus minutes yeah. that are fully stretched out you know, all ready to go when they bring, I understand Rashford, he still plays on Man U. Is that still correct? Yes, he still does. Yeah, he still does. So that club is very well known throughout the world. Mm -hmm. But then you bring him on just to do penalty. Like, I I, I don't understand that. I wasn't, I didn't catch the full game. I didn't catch the penalty. Give me like, Give me some sort of reasoning. You're you're the big soccer guy. You play soccer mm-hmm. for your whole life. So, w- why did you think it was the reasoning behind that? It's one of those weird scenarios where Rashford is Rashford scores go, scores penalties in his sleep. Like yeah. he scores penalties in his sleep. It's one of those. It's one of those just unfortunate situations. But and it's one of those situations where you really cut like. What Gareth Southgate's done with this England team, he's done far better than I think any England fan would have thought. Yeah. Um, his first major tournament in the World Cup in 2018, he took England to the semi-final. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that unified the people of the country together as a whole. But then a lot of the time, our qualifying wasn't particularly overwhelming. It mm. was fairly ordinary. It was fairly ordinary. I mean, it was. It's typical England. Like they do yeah. what you do what you have to do to get to a major tournament. But the way this Euros was played out all over because of the COVID pandemic and whatnot, mm-hmm. a lot of the teams were playing their games in their respective national stadiums. Yeah. Um, so you had England playing all their games at Wembley, apart from the one game against the Ukraine when they had to go to Rome. Mm-hmm. You had Spain playing their games in Spain, you had uh Germany playing their games at the Allianz Arena in Munich. Um, but then you had unfortunate teams like Wales who were traveling from St. Petersburg back to Spain, then going back off to Baku, like going all over, going all over the country, going all of, not, not to forget the country, to like the entire European continent. Yeah. So it was really one of the, it was, it favored some teams, but it was really harsh on some others. And mm. it was, I was talking to my dad about this quite a bit. This was England's probably... This was their best chance at at least getting to a major European final, mm-hmm. and to come that close on a penalty shootout. And England don't have a great track record for a penalty shoot like for penalty shootouts. They we've struggled with those. It's never been one of our fortes. But yeah. so going into penalties, I was like, oh god, like, <laughs> please, no, 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 no. But. It was one of those things when Italy missed their first penalty and Maguire went up and took the camera out in the top bins of the net. I was like, raw, like this, like this could be, this could be good. Yeah. But then unfortunately it was just one of those unfortunate things. And this was where I was like, yeah, you should have brought Rashford and Sancho on earlier because Rashford's first touch of the ball was the penalty. 
Same okay, with yes. San- same with Jaden Sancho. So, um, if he brought them on the same time that he had maybe brought Saka on, mm-hmm. get them a run through of the game, get them like get them running through their paces a little bit, yeah, and uh, kind of try and get them in the flow of the game a little bit instead of bringing them on so late into the game. But it's just one of it was just one it's one of those unfortunate it was just one of those unfortunate unfortunate things, but it's it's really put a damper on how well England did because of what happened afterwards. Yeah. Because of what happened afterwards with all these low life cowards sending racist like racist abuse oh. to those people. Like I was literally like, yeah. are you, I was literally like, are you freaking kidding me? Like yeah. you're that low, like you're that much of a low life bastard, excuse my language, but yeah. to do something like that, like yeah, no, it's completely. I mean, it, it, it's a game. I understand it's a big game on a worldwide stage, but you know, yeah, it, it, there's number of also number of factors. You know that you can't just blame it on the certain player that you know missed a penalty kick. You, you you have to look at the game as a whole. Well, did they miss different opportunities that they should have scored on? Should England have? I don't know if many people know this term, but park the bus in a sense. You know. In yeah. the back for the whole game. That's essentially it's... what they were doing. That's essentially what they were doing for the much parts of the second half, and that's why Italy kept coming back into the game. Yeah. And then I was texting my dad throughout the game, and I'm and I'm like, we need a second, we need a third, like we need to get yeah. Grealish on, we need to get Rashford, Sancho on, and all these players. And when we just kept sitting back and sitting back and sitting back and sitting back, I was like, oh god, I can see this coming, I can see this coming. But when Italy scored, it was. You can see the tide was turning. Yeah. And but it's one of the it was one of those things where it was just it could have been handled differently, but on the on the flip side, you have to look at the thing from a perspective. Like this England team's done so much better than anybody thought that anybody else that anybody else thought that they were gonna do. Um yeah. this England team was probably Italy's toughest test. In terms of like they hadn't played a team that was arguably this good. I mean, you yeah. could say that Bel. I mean, you could say that Belgium were probably going to be their toughest test on paper, but Italy blew them away. Italy blew them away in twenty minutes. The game was done after twenty minutes. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, Bel- like like yeah, Belgium got a penalty. The like yeah, Belgium got a penalty back in the like right on the stroke of half time, but Belgium missed three or four Guild's edge chances. Yeah. So that. I mean, everything looks good on paper until they actually play on the field. Now, I got a question for you. Now, were you expecting to have an England versus Italy matchup at all in the Euros, or were you more looking at completely two different teams that you weren't expecting? Um, to be perfectly honest, no, I wasn't. Um, I was expecting – France. I was expecting the final to be either France versus Germany mm-hmm. or France versus Belgium. Okay. But then when France went out on penalties to Switzerland, I was like, "Yo, my bracket is screwed right now." But, <laughs> um, but yeah, when France went out, when Germany went out to England, uh, when Belgium went out to Italy, I was thinking to myself, "No, yeah, if Spain don't, if Spain don't." If Spain don't go out, then yeah, because that was the one wild card was Spain. The one wild yeah. card was Spain. The other wild card being Denmark. But I saw patches in the Italy Spain mm-hmm. game where England, if they went at, if they went at Italy and an aging backline and an aging Italian backline, because the two mm-hmm. centre backs for Italy, you combine their two ages together, it's like seventy three years old. <laughs> in Chiellini and Benucci, like it's ridiculous. Yes, but. It's ridiculous that they're still playing at the level at the level that they're playing at, and still playing at the, the level that they're playing at so well. But what? Um, but I was watching the Spain game, and when Spain equalized, they split Italy open like a filet mignon steak. Like yeah. it was, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, but. It was just one of those. It's just one of those really unfortunate things. And that's if the, if it, if England had played the way that they did against Denmark, the way they did against Italy, yeah. is if you run at them, you run at them, you run them ragged because that's exactly yeah. what that's exactly what they did to Denmark. Denmark were 
Denmark were literally on their knees when it came to when it came to the second period of extra time. And that was when England took over. That was when England got the penalty. That's when they made the changes. That's when they brought Sancho on. That's when they brought Grealish on. That's when they brought Rashford on. They bring on these guys that have pace and they go at their back line. Yeah. And they just they just ran them ragged. They ran ragged. But you know, I I remember seeing before, you know, I think right after high school we watched a lot of menu games. You know, and all yeah. that stuff. So, I saw Rashford when he, I think when he first started or something. You know, yep. that that's yeah. now a number of years ago. So I'm trying to remember all mm. that stuff. But yeah, I mean, it it was a it was a tight game. I'm kind of glad nobody got blown out. Like England didn't decide to go on like a three zero run or Italy the same thing. Mm. Like it was tight and contested. And it's always nice to see when it goes to penalties. Especially because you don't know. <laughs> well, well, I know not for you. I'm sure for not a lot of people. But at the yeah. same time, it, it makes the game to a different level. It brings that intensity from either side of fan bases. Um, yeah. Because I, as we saw, you could you could think you're going top shelf, top left, top right. And then either you completely miss or you're too high, too low. And sometimes they just yeah. make the goalies just make a great save. Mm-hmm. But that was, no. that was just one of those things. That was just one of those things. That was exactly the way it was in the penalties. I mean, the Italian keeper is six foot three and 20 years old. a little old. taller than me. Wow. Yeah, he's huge. Like, he's, oh. I forget how, I forget how tall Donnarumma is, but he's like, he's either six three or six five, but the guy is huge. Guy's huge. And he's 22 <laughs> years old. And you're going, you like, you have a, you've got a normal size goal. And you've yeah. got a six foot five giant with the wings, with the length, with the arms length of a small airplane. Like yeah. it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah. there was one stat where I mean, because him and Pickford going into the Pickford the England goalkeeper going into the game, they the two teams were exactly identical. They were mm. identical. They didn't really concede a whole lot of goals. They Italy really only conceded. I'm trying to think how many goals they did concede. The only goal I think they conceded from open play was Morata's goal that Spain scored against them. So really only one. It was really only one. It was the exact same as England. It was the yeah. exact same as England. And the only goal that England conceded from open play was against Italy. So, so yeah, um, so two very well balanced teams faced up against each other, which is also great to see. As yeah. Nick, you you and me both know. I mean, we've gone it baseball games we've got a hockey games mm-hmm. um and we've seen same level of playing match or if not one team better than the other and yeah. sometimes that's not fun to watch but to see them now um i just want to ask one a uh, few more last questions before we wrap this up where mm-hmm. do you see england going from this next step where do you see like some of these players i know they'll probably go back to their home clubs you know mm-hmm. like rashford back to man U and all mm-hmm. those other guys back where do you see England go from here? I see them going onwards and upwards. I see them going onwards and upwards. With the team that they have right now, with the amount of quality that they have, like it's it's scary how mm-hmm. crazy stacked this England team is. Because when you when you have a bench where you can bring on a when you can bring on the likes of a Jack Grealish off the bench, you can bring on the likes of a Marcus Rashford, a Jaden Sancho, um, like a Jude Bellingham, players like that that are so good and are so good at what they do it's positive signs moving forward and when it comes to the 2022 world cup i back them to get to at least the semis again semis. i back them to get to at least the semis again i back this italy team to get to at least the semis mm-hmm. i back france to get to at least the semis and then it depends on what goes on with your like with your germany's your belgium's Germ- brazil um, would Brazil be yeah. considering that? Kind of, not really? Okay. No, not really. Um, because I was watching the – I watched a bit of the Copa America game between yeah. Brazil and Argentina. It was drab. It was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. It was one of the worst games I think I've ever seen. But it just wasn't – I the South American teams, um, to be brutally honest, are nowhere near as good as the European teams. Yeah, they're, they're nowhere near as good. I mean, the qual the level of quality between, I mean, yeah, people will say like, oh, Messi and Argentina, Neymar and Brazil, but that's really it. That's really it. Yeah, only two 
two or three big names for that yeah. portion of the soccer world doesn't make up for the soccer. You know, you, you look at the Europeans, Nick, you just list it's Rashford. Quality. And, it's yeah, it's qu- yeah. And, it's, but it's one of those, it's one of those crazy things where you back, you see the teams that I said, like England, Italy, France, you know, your, your Germany's, your Belgium's, yep. your Spain's. I mean, Spain are one centre forward away from being an absolute world beating team. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I was watching some of their games, and they some of some of the time that it's not the Spain of it's not the Spain of old that won Euro that won the European Championships in two thousand eight, then went on to win the World Cup in South Africa when we were in eighth grade, and then went on to win the twenty twelve European Championships. That yeah. Spanish team's never going to happen. That Spanish team is never going to be beaten. I mean, that Spanish team was one of the best teams I've ever seen play. Because going from Euro, two-time European championships, two-time European champions in the space yeah. of four years, four years, and then adding on that, and then adding on that world champions again, like I don't see that happening again. Um, Germany, we'll see what happens with them because they're going to get a new manager now. Yeah. Um, we'll see what happens with Spain. France will have roughly about the same team. So will England. So will Italy. Um, I back the so European pe- teams. To, I back a European team to win it. So potential rematches is what you tell me. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. I don't see why not. I so, don't see why not. So then you, you, your dad, and I'm sure any England fan and any Italian fan is going to really be looking forward to possibly around round two in a sense, Italy versus England, England versus Italy. Um, later on down the line, on another world base stage, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. Whether that be I the mean, World Cup or the Euros again. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where you can never count out any of the other teams. Like you can never count out France. You can never count out Germany. Yep. Germany always finds some way. France have one of the best teams in the world. Spain are one centre forward away from being in contention again. Um. You can never count out Portugal. Can never count out uh, who else? Um, can never count out. Can never count out Croatia. Even though I don't really see them being the team that they were uh, three years ago when they were in the World Cup final. But can never count out Croatia. Can yep. never count out teams like Brazil, your Argentina, but. You, if being being Americans, you want to say that you want to throw the U.S. into the World Cup mix somehow in some way, but it's, I don't really see it. No, and even though like I, when that happens, I try to root for the U.S. But we, I've seen it watching it with you guys for a number of years with the World Cup. We've had watch parties with all of us guys. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, to watch the U.S. and then get you know, either beaten or slaughtered by an opposing team. It's like, okay, let's, uh, you know, that's why I think so many people do root for like England, Italy, you know, a Brazil, you know, a Croatian team, uh, you know, I, the list can go on and on, but I think that's because they're also, they have not because of the star players they have on their team, but also how much better they are, how, how well Mm -hmm. they're performing. We, you also have to look at this is, I'm not, the United States in America isn't really built around soccer in a sense. You know, soccer it's on isn't the growth, but it's, not it's like on the growth. Base. It's yeah. not the base of, you know, of sport. It's like you see a lot of people now always kicking around a soccer ball, always playing mm-hmm. soccer, you know, and Nick, uh, way back when, when we were in um, elementary school, you know, how many of us <laughs> played soccer and compared to, you know, so you always see that it's, it's a growing sport within the country, which is nice to see, especially adding that to another top contender sport. But Nick, bring back elementary school. Look, that makes me feel like a dinosaur. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Well. Like, God damn. <laughs> we old. <laughs> oh yeah, um, we are. But to to kind of wrap this up, Nick, I appreciate you coming on, talking some yeah, soccer absolutely. with me. You have a yeah, lot more knowledge than I do. Hey, listen, no problem. I'm glad to see you. Even though I re- we haven't really touched base and haven't talked over the last few months since, um, what was it, the holidays or whatnot. So yeah. looking forward to seeing you soon. But yeah. I appreciate you coming on. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, again, 
you can always find you'll find this video on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Review and Preview Sports right below. Plenty of content going out. We're trying to do stuff all summer long where we're just producing content of wide range of sports. I know I'm going to try to cover different sports like I covered soccer. Maybe I'll, you know, me and my other buddy play bocce. So maybe me and him will come on and talk about that. You know, I'm trying to cover, kind of expand our horizons in a sense and also kind of see what's out there in, in the sports world. You know, there's many of things like cornhole, for example. Nick, me and you love playing it. We didn't really know what it was until we started <laughs> playing. We're like, wow, this game's a lot of fun. And then on ESPN yeah. and stuff, they have it. But, guys, thanks for watching. It was a great soccer talk with Nick. Uh, Nick, thank you again for coming on. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, and I will see you guys next time. No problem. I will see you in a few hours. Yes, you will. Yeah, man. Looking forward to it. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, bro.